Bass City. The mineral Jeep is made here. Home of the minor league Mud Hens. And of course, Mash's Corporal Klinger. But it's also the home of Arca. Born in Toledo in 1953, this is where it all began on the half mile high bank Toledo Raceway Park dirt track. When the old dirt track stomping grounds gave way to horse racing, the newer Toledo Speedway brought out its own brand of horsepower in the early 1960s, becoming the hallowed home turf for the stars and cars of the ARCA Remax Series. Although the cars have certainly changed since then, the bump and bang short track action remains true to its roots. So please, by all means, be our guest in our hometown. Let's head out to the backyard for one of our favorite short track wars, ARCA Remax Series, and it's next on Speed. Night short track racing ready to go from Toledo Speedway. It's the Hands 200. It's going to be a great night of short track stock car racing with the ARCA Remax Series from Toledo Speedway in Toledo, Ohio. And before we go racing with the green flag, let's head right downstairs to Don Radeball. Well, thanks, Ralph. Nothing like starting out with a big story. How about this? 22-year-old rookie Josh Richardson, in only his third series attempt, knocked the five-time champ Frank Kimmel off the pole in the final moments of qualifying. Congratulations, Josh. You've got one good lap in. How about 200 more? Can you win this thing here tonight? Well, guys, I really think we can. We've got a really good race car tonight, and uh, we've been working hard at the shop. If we had some sponsors on the car, we could run every week. Uh, looking for that opportunity, but we'd hope to make the best out of tonight, uh, come back with a victory, and uh, have some fun tonight after it's over with. Well, if he does get to victory lane, it'll add a real nice kickstart to a birthday party. He turns 23 tomorrow to Lindsay Zarniak. The last time the ARCA Remax Series was here in Toledo was back in May, and that is when Billy Venturini got into the side of Frank Kimmel. Instead of taking the lead, he took the black flag. Well, tonight they are back together again. Frank Kimmel starts second, but just two doors down, Billy Venturini. Billy, I want to know, would a win here tonight be sweet redemption? Oh, it sure would. Uh, since we left here in May, we felt like we were possibly done a little wrong. It was some real hard racing, and... Uh, I'm going to try to duplicate what we did here in, in the fall, or I mean in the spring, and get the Central Merchants uh, Chevrolet in victory lane tonight. Billy Venturini looking for his first ARCA Remax Series win. All right, Lindsay, thanks. This is what it looked like at Springfield just a week ago. Bill Baird in the 52 coming up the inside of Frank Kimmel as the two former champions of the ARCA Series battle it out for the win on the one mile dirt oval. Coming to the checkered flag as Kimmel took one last shot at him. Bill Baird held on for the win. It's the only time Bill had raced in the series all season long and he ended up picking up the win. Here's a look at the points coming into tonight's round, which is round 18, 17 and the 22 scheduled for this year are complete. Frank Kimmel well on his way to his sixth championship with the ARCA Remax Series. And that's a look at the rest of the top 10. Hi, everybody. I'm Ralph Shaheen, joined by Jim Trado. And this should be an action-packed night of 200 laps of racing around this high-banked half mile. And Jim, I got to expect a lot of bumping and banging. What can we see as a key, though, to getting through all that into victory lane? The Arca Remax Series has said the officials that this is the best short track car they had all year and in a while. There are champions from all divisions coming here to converge on Toledo Speedway. Former series champions, guys hungry for their first win. It's a matter of who's your tires. When to bolt down those four fresh hoosers early in the race, later in the race, that may determine the winner when to come down pit road and how often. And that's what's going to be the key. How do you play out that strategy? and where they go to get those tires and when do they decide to do that. Well, before we get set for the green flag, let's head back downstairs to Don Radeball. Ralph, what I like about coming home to Toledo for the ARCA series is all the second generation flavor, like Brian Keselowski, who starts seventh. Brian's father, Bob, was the 1989 ARCA Remax Series champion. In fact, both father and son were former Toledo Speedway late model champions 20 years apart. Tonight, father Bob will crew chief for Brian here at Toledo Speedway, while mother Kay Keselowski will spot from above. It's a Keselowski ARCA family affair here in hometown Arcaville. Gentlemen. Well, this is called the Hands Group 200. The Hands Group is a Detroit-based full-service financial consulting and investment firm. Let's head downstairs for the command to start engines tonight. From the Hands Group. On behalf of the Hands Group, drivers, start your engine. The big V8 
38s rumble to life, and we'll be set to go racing with the green flag when we come back after this. Channel's coverage of the ARCA REMAX series is brought to you by REMAX, outstanding agents, outstanding results. And by Gladiator Garage Works by Whirlpool Corporation. Gladiator Garage Works, it's time to rethink the garage. Well, before we can go racing, we got to show you the starting grid. Well, let's take you through that now. On the pole, what is story is Josh Richardson taking that pole. And it was one of the last cars to go out on the racetrack. A lot of veterans are saying, ah, I think we might have a top five. Well, you know what? Josh did it to the rest of them. Jason, Justin was on the on the outside of front row last the race at Springfield. Backs up for that youngster. Top two rows of qualifying for him as well. Taking a look back through row four. Chris Serio in the 42 car. He's going to be a story tonight. Brian Campbell, that's the son of Freddie Campbell. They know what they're doing here in Arca, running for Vernon Slaw's equipment. And Bobby Gerhardt back in action full time again. Working our way back through row number six. And now row seven, G.R. Smith and Will Langhorn making a first start on a short track. Todd Bauscher back in row eight. The Bauscher family always winners here in Arca. Todd looking for his first victory. Top 10 in points is also a plus for them heading into this event. There you see Jason Jarrett in the 67 car on the inside of row nine. And Mark Gibson and T.J. Bell will line up shoulder to shoulder in row 10. Billy Shotko and A.J. Pike. He's been here in Midgets and Sprint Car. He's going to try an Arthur Stock Car tonight. Joe Cooksey taking over the uh, Ron Cox ride in the 23 for the rest of the season outside of Mike Harmon. Andy Belmont had a yellow number one. That recall, that kind of reflects the first ever car he raced, a yellow race car. Rope 15 now. Daryl Basham, he is back in 10th in the point standings. He takes a provisional here tonight. Brad Smith and Claire Zimmerman making a start with the 84 Leopard car. And rounding out the field will be Tim Mitchell and Garrett Liberty. Now we do have some onboard cameras for you tonight. That's Jason Jarrett providing us with one look. And Mike Garrity has the Hans Group car. Car number two. He's starting 12th tonight. And the man chasing his sixth championship, Frank Kimmel. Will start second, but Josh Richardson alongside and should give us a great look from his number 46. Well, we know there's 200 laps around this high banked half mile. Got a few other things for you tonight, too. 34 cars start. There's an all star field, truly. The Arca Series again. Short track racing, a very great, diverse group. But Justin Algeyer, Algeyer is one of the guys to watch the 86 car. He's one of the 34 guys that starts the field. Pit road speed 20 miles an hour. The pace car just 25 miles an hour, Ralph. Let's head back downstairs to Don Radeball. 18 year old Justin Algeyer, as you mentioned, just maybe one to watch tonight. The Springfield, Illinois driver qualified outside pole here in the spring and led the first 12 laps before his transmission broke. In only a handful of starts, this young guy has finished a career best third at Salem last year. Gentlemen, I really think we need to keep an eye on the 86 car. Justin Allgaier all over it tonight. Lindsay. Thanks, Don. You know, like a kid in a candy store, rookie Josh Allison has been handing out lollipops to all the kids around the track today, but it turns out he's really a kid himself. He turned 16 early April, just before the Salem race. He said that his youth and experience, or lack of experience, he hopes will turn into a good victory here tonight. Unfortunately for you and I, Jimmy, uh, old age and treachery are becoming more our uh, mottos of the day, aren't they? Ah, uh, yeah, you got that right. This is going to be a great race. A lot of veterans showing these youngsters how to get it done on short tracks, and this is the best place to watch. Toledo Speedway, the home of the ARCA Series. Who's your bias ply tires is what we're using here tonight, and we've had a little bit of a drizzle just before we got started here tonight. That's why we're getting a few extra pace laps in. Is that going to be an issue trying to get some traction in the early stages here? Well, I believe the team's tested under very hot, humid conditions earlier this afternoon. Talking to some drivers, including Bob Blount, who's making his first ARCA start, but has a lot of experience here in Super Lates, said this track doesn't change a whole lot. Throughout. And we're green! Wow, what a start by Josh Richardson. Boy, he just left Kimmel at the start, didn't he? Frank Kimmel.
Kimmel had the lead late in the going and had it taken away from him. Perhaps he's letting these rabbits go for a few laps here in the early going. And Ron Boyle with the second five-time champ, going to be six-time champ here in Arca. Jumping into second place is Justin Allgaier in that 86 car that you heard Don talking about. just how fast they're whistling around this high bank tap pile. It's a deceptive speedway. The banking on the cameras doesn't exactly give you the indication of just how steeply banked the corners are. And we're going to see some great two-wide racing as well. These corners really hold the speed around this racetrack. Going through turns one and two. A very nice, smooth transition down the backstretch. Out the back now of the 46. We're watching off of Frank Kimmel's car. Looking back to the 64. Josh Allison running in fourth. around the zero cars we already get ourselves into traffic Tim Mitchell out of Fayetteville Tennessee in the zero six car Josh Allison this is the number that Ryan Hempel is taking to victory lane but this is their very own family team so as that 16 year old learns track time here he's following one of the best Frank Kimball now as they battle for third and fourth and zero six car of course Garrett Liberty out of Jonesboro Georgia that car that Josh Richardson is driving, uh, fairly familiar to the black and silver. <laughs> the race leader actually had to get a new body. It's one of the older chassis in the field. So Josh Richardson and his dad, Donnie, who's here helping him out, said, you know what? We had to get a body that was more update, up to date. So that black and silver 70 might look a little, little familiar for the Kevin Harvick fans watching tonight. That body was purchased from RCR, and it uh, actually still holds that paint job from the GM Goodred Chevy that Harvick drives in next to Cup. There's your battle for second, and it's a pretty good one. Four cars right in the freight chain having at it for second place, and that's Frank Kimmel in the 46, sitting back in third, really working the backside of car number 86, Justin Allgaier out of Springfield, Illinois. Last week, they were in his hometown on the one-mile dirt track. And running in fourth, car 64, Josh Allison. Boy, a little loose on the backside of that car. Coming down the front straightaway. And that's one of the things you have to be very good at here at Toledo is your handling. It's not a high horsepower track. These guys are just getting to a rhythm, Ralph. And right now, they're trying to run and trying to find the line. There is only one groove right now on this racetrack. We're going to find out, indeed, where and if Frank Kimmel can make advancements here on young Justin as they go through turns three and four, pretty much in the same tire tracks. But if anybody's going to try something, I believe it's the five-time champ who's going to look outside early. Rochester Hills, Michigan's Brian Keselowski runs in fourth in the black 29 behind this car that you're on board with. That's Frank Kimmel. Giving us the view as we work our way through traffic in the opening stages. Just 12 of 200 laps completed here at Toledo. Stay with us. More great arc action coming your way on speed. Toledo Speedway, the Hands Group 200. You're looking at the Hands Group back number two of Mike Garrity out of Rochester Hills, Michigan. And he's the reason why we're under yellow. Just as we went to break, this took place. We're on board. Bobby Gerhardt and the Lucas Oil Chevy right behind him coming down the front stretch. Everything looks clean and mean going into turn one. There's Bobby the Garrett says hello. And around goes Garrity. And that brought the caution, the first of the night out. And Garrity's got the number two hands group machine rolling around again now. And Billy Venturini in the 25 apparently has some issues. The driver who almost got his first career ARCA Remax Series victory here back in the springtime was hoping for it to come maybe here tonight, Don. Well the, well, the car is still very good, but it does have some fender damage. He said someone in front of him had missed a shift, so he clobbered the car in front of him, and it caused some front end and fender damage. They're afraid that they might have a tire rub, and they are definitely concerned uh, on the 25 car. Handle's still there, but uh, it's not as aerodynamically sound as it was, of course. That doesn't matter a whole bunch at Toledo Speedway, but they are very concerned, and they are discussing whether they should or should not come down pit road. Well, Jim, some guys will tell you it's not ready to go racing until they at least have at least one scratch on it. And the more more important view of this is what we just saw as he rolled by his dad, Bill Venturini, is up in the spotter stand. He's the one saying that right front tire is okay or it's rubbing on the fender. The whole team works toward making those calls, and Bill, as a crew chief tonight, is making the calls from the roof, spotting for his son. Well, Langhorn in the 04 having some issues, trying to get the uh, 04 ready to go. 
He's a buddy of Brent Sherman. It's his first ever stock car race ever. He yeah. ran Formula 3000 in Europe last year. They said, hey, let's get together and maybe do some stock car races. So the second in points guy had a little busier week with the crew getting two cars ready for tonight. Let's go downstairs to Lindsay. Thanks. I want to add that uh, Frank Kibble, he honestly had a big smile on his face all day long because he is so used to this track. This is where he ran his first ARCA race ever, and this is also the track that he first won on. That was back in 1994. He also said, hey, I named my cars after country music singers. This one's named Wendy, and I think she's going to take me to a win. Well, from where we're sitting here, Jim, looks like we might be getting a little bit of uh, rain on the windshields, too. There was reports of potential showers throughout the region. Uh, Don, can you feel it raining on your head there? Yeah, I can feel it raining on my head. Uh, I hope there's no lightning with walking around with an antenna on my head. But yeah, head had a few raindrops and still feeling them for about the past half hour. So I wanted to add to Frank Kimmel that if uh, he is uh, if he leads 35 laps tonight, he will break the eight thousand lap leader mark he will he has already led seven thousand nine hundred and sixty five laps he needs just thirty five more to break eight thousand laps led throughout his illustrious career in the arca remax series as he steers toward his record tying sixth series title it has been a magnificent career his 276 career start here tonight green flag up let's get after it Down the back stretch we go, and right back out in front is Josh Richardson. And this is really what Josh needed. Jim, you and I spent quite a bit of time talking to Donnie Richardson, his dad, earlier this afternoon. And they feel like Josh has the talent to run with anybody. Uh, a lot of the young guys that are getting the breaks and getting the opportunities, but that's really the hardest part of this game, getting those breaks and opportunities. And sometimes just skill isn't all you got. And it's all about timing as well. It's a matter of networking and timing. When he was 19, he ran two ARCA races, nearly won Pocono, had a knock and range short. And so that was a few years ago. They're trying to regroup and gather it back in. This is a neat deal, and he helped put that car together. The owner, John Bailey, said, you know what? Why don't we race that car, Toledo? You guys did a lot of work on getting that car ready. Second yellow flag of the night now on lap 20. The 26 car spinning around. That's Brad Smith out of Belleville, Michigan. The CoolMat.com Ford. Turned around, down near turns one and two. We'll take that opportunity to get some more business taken care of. We'll be right back for more of the Hands Group 200. We're back to Toledo Speedway, the Arca Remax 200. And there's Brad Smith's number 26, which is the reason why we're under our second caution of the night. He got some front end damage, but as he goes into turn one, notice he got low, but then the sparks flew as he tried to stay down on the apron, and he got into Mike Garrity and spun it around. What Mike Garrity's had a busy night. <laughs> it's his first short track race. Welcome to short track race in Arca style here. And involved in both of the uh, first two cautions of the night. So Brad Smith's got that front nose torn up pretty good. Lindsay, what do you have for us? Word was uh, flying around the garage today. You guys will understand what I mean. Mike Harmon, a lot of the drivers were saying, has one of the most creative new sponsors out there. It's Global Pigeon Supplies, and it's exactly what it sounds like. If you check out the hood of his car when you get a chance, it's a company that races pigeons, and they make millions of dollars off these pigeon races. They've flown birds from as far as Savannah to Alabama, and I asked him, I said, Mike, do you know about this? He's like, I learned a lot about it. Seems cool, but I don't know. <laughs> well, Mike's... Won a lot of races in his day. Three track championships out of Alabama. Two different racetracks down there. This is his fourth Arcus Remax Series start this season. His best finish is 17th in Michigan. Back from the short tracks and of course racing in the Bush Series. And who could forget his crash at Bristol a few years back where he oh, completely yeah. destroyed that race car. Glad to see him that racing at 100% once again. Said this track actually looks like uh, the racetrack in Montgomery where he won one of his titles. He won two in Birmingham. And the, the track championship that he won at Montgomery, he only raced one year at Montgomery, and that was the year he won the title. That's pretty good. And again, he's another one of those short track races attracted to the Arca Remax Series. A very hectic schedule. The next three races, Ralph Happen, next two events are within the next nine days. Well, we're on board with Frank Kimmel. Let's see, uh, Jim, if you can catch him on the radio and find out how the weather's affecting things. <laughs> Let's dial up here. Frank Kimmel, Jim Trado in the Speed Channel booth. You copy? I got you, guys. 
How wet is your windshield? Are we ready to go back racing in your estimation? No, I think the track's fine. The windshield's pretty solid up right now, but uh, seems like it's uh, you know, probably the same for everybody. Frank, you let these young guys lead like rabbits here early on, or is your car not perfect just yet? Not bad. Car's running pretty good. We're just uh, biding our time here. Thanks, Frank. We're going this time. Getting ready to go back to green, and that's one of the ways that you win six championships. Five already in the bag, and maybe a sixth on the way by being patient. If I was driving, I'd have like a heartbeat of a 200 beats per minute. It'd sound like his was well under 60. You know what I'm saying? Just every day, it's in the office. This is how we get things done. Oh, look at that. The car on the inside struggling to get going. That's Garrity. Car really breaking loose, and that allowed Josh Richardson to once again get a tremendous start as he go on board with Garrity as the field streams past him. Frank Kimmel's car, and you can see how they're starting to pull away a little bit. Kimmel in third, starting to leave a pretty good gap between him and the 64 car of Josh Allison, who holds down fourth. There's Josh in that red 64. Also getting into the mix now is the 65 car of Brian Campbell out of Battle Creek, Michigan. Brian has started to close up. He's got the 64 car. Or I should say the 64 car has moved up into that battle. That's the one I was with Josh House when we talked about that, and the 65 getting up in there as well. The scoring monitor not catching up with it. Oh, trouble again. Just as we talked about him, the 65 goes around. Brian Campbell, it is. First start in the Arca Remax Series here at Toledo. Son of Freddie Campbell, as we mentioned. Freddie, a winner with Vern Schwaz equipment last season at his home track at Berlin Raceway. And looking at how things shape up, Brian was pretty confident he had a top 10 run tonight, but perhaps a little bit slick out there. Let's see if we can find out what the problem was and if that was the cause. Yeah, it might have been a little of assistance there by young Mr. Serio as the yellow car was also sideways heading into turn number one. They might have made contact and almost did a synchronized spin there. I don't know. I think I'd like to see that again. It looked to me like he might have just cooked it in there a little bit hot. Let's take one more look at it. Because it looked to me like Syria jumped on the brakes to avoid it. See, he's way sideways before Syria even gets near him there, Jim. Syria's in that yellow 42 car, and he dives to the bottom to avoid it. I got a funny feeling maybe that rain that we're seeing falling so they were, getting a little bit hot. They were a bit higher as well on the racetrack heading into the corner. Syria, of course, in that brand new 42 car. Let's check in with Don Radebaugh. Well, yeah, since we're on the subject of rain, it is becoming more pronounced, more steady down here. It's been drizzling on and off for the past 40 minutes. By the way, Brian Campbell, this car actually used to be a Bush Series car. A Bush car is actually five inches shorter than the Cup car or an ARCA car, so they stretched it, turned it into an ARCA car. This is more second-generation ARCA flavor here. He is, as you mentioned, the son of Fred Campbell, a former ARCA winner at Berlin. Fred, his father, a 10-time Berlin late model track champion, but more second-generation ARCA flavor in the field. In fact, there are nine second- and third-generation ARCA drivers in the show here tonight, hoping for better things for Brian Campbell throughout. Well, there's the 42 car that we were talking about. Chris Serio making his first start with the series. Hopefully, uh, we'll be seeing more of him before the year's out. That car came from Robert Yates Racing. It's an old Elliott Sadler car. It's a Cunningham Motorsports car. Eddie Sharp, who crew chief Bill Baird to his championship, crew chiefing this car, says that's a fast young man. We can expect more of in the future. As the chase gets closer, every second on the track counts. Join Speed Channel for live coverage of Nextel Cup Happy Hour. Find out who's dialed in and who missed the setup. It's the last chance to get it right. NASCAR Nextel Cup final practice tomorrow, 1 Eastern, only on Speed. We're back here at Toledo Speedway. Ralph Shaheen along with Jim Trado up here in the booth. Lindsay Zarniak and Don Radabaugh working downstairs for us, trying to stay dry. We've got some showers in the area. We're scheduled for 200 laps here at the Hans Group 200, the Arca Remax Series round 18 of, set of 22 for the 2004 championship. And you're on board the points leader right now, Frank Kimmel. And Ralph, think about this. The best thing to do under a short little drizzle like this, leave the race cars on the racetrack. They are the best dryer you could ever hope for when it comes to keeping the track as dry as possible. Well, working uh, the radio and talking to Frank Kimmel worked out pretty good. Why don't you try Jason Jarrett? Jason Jarrett, Jim Trade on the Speed Channel booth. You copy? Yeah, 10 more. I've got you. 
Now, Jason, you told me before the race that you've had to come from 17th before. How about your chances with the weather and with the car? How it's shaping up right now? Have you been able to advance as quickly as you thought you would? Uh, no, I haven't. No, we haven't really. Uh, I got into the, the 91 car uh, a little bit earlier in the race because she was holding me up a little bit, just went down in the grass and then bounced up into her. I think I knocked the toe out a little bit. When, uh, I think we, if we ever get a long, longer green flag run, uh, well, these guys stop, stop spinning out and stuff. I think we'll be okay. Jason, talk about pit strategy. Knowing that you've got a slight toe-in problem where the wheels aren't going the same direction, does that mean you may want to pit in the next couple of caution laps or maybe before some of these other guys would? Yeah, I definitely think we'll probably, uh, we'll probably pit. Maybe not here in the next few laps or anything like that, but uh, we'll definitely come in and try, try to adjust on the, the Gladiator Garage work, Finnegan Chevrolet, and see, uh, see if we can make it better, get up there in the top 10 and top 5. 10-4, Jason, best of luck. We'll check back with you later on. Thanks a lot. The 91 that he was talking about is Christy Passmore. She runs in 23rd right now. Don? I just wanted to add while we're at it here, you know, the ARCA Remax Series always prides itself on its diversity, and that's just what we'll have in the next week or so. A short track, a dirt track, and a super speedway. Of course, it starts here at Toledo Speedway, the half mile, and just three days away, these same stars and cars will be lined up on the mile dirt at the DeCoin State Fairgrounds. Then they head right down the road to Chicagoland Speedway next Saturday for a 1.5 mile super speedway classic. A short track, a dirt track, and a super Speedway, I think this particular nine day stretch really helps, really does spell out what this series is, what it's all about. Lindsay. Don, it's someone new to ARCA race cars is Brian Keslowski. And today, when I spoke to him in the garage, he was so pumped up about his car because he is a late model champion at this track. He said his ARCA car today is great. He has never driven ARCA cars here, but he says the difference he expects is going to be like driving a taxi cab over the track. But he's driven here at Toledo for years, and he thinks that experience alone is going to pull him through. He spent a lot of time watching his dad. Yeah, I asked, car. and I asked him, I said, how long did you race here? He said, I only raced here for a full season, like Mike Harmon at Montgomery. Yep. Last year was the only year Brian ran for points and won the late model championship here at Toledo. Don was talking about that race from Chicago. That'll be our next Speed Channel telecast of the ARCA Remax Series. We'll be joining you from Chicago, bringing you that race next uh, Saturday afternoon. Should be a lot of fun. Unfortunately, we're not going to go to the mild dirt of coin. You got to go around. Well, I've been fans. there for motorcycles. Oh, yeah. We're back to green here. This time, Richardson doesn't get the start he had hoped for as the 86 car of Justin Algar comes right with him. And the battle for the lead makes its way down the back stretch. And it's a good one. Aldire stuck on the bottom there, glued to the bottom in that Ford. Looks like Richardson may have a little bit of a handling issue, not keeping that car right on the white line. Yes, you can see how the 86 car, the red and yellow machine, running in second, glued right down to the bottom of the white stripe, and that's really where you want to be. Richardson about a half a group up above that. Play here the 26. Brad Smith having issues again, sparking a big time. And guess what? We're under caution again, and this time it's on the back straightaway. The 94 car involved. Well, I talked to GR Smith before the race. He was pumped out of Folsom, New Jersey. He really wanted to do well. He thought he had a top 10 race car after qualifying well up in the uh, top 10 there, actually 13th on the grid early See what on. happened to him here, Jim. He Whoa. gets involved with the one car. Andy Belmont was right there on the inside. Now watch this. The car's going to turn around on him and get stuck up on the barrier. Those rear wheels are just spinning there. Look at that. Can't go anywhere. Stuck. High-sided, would that be the word? That would be the word. So we'll take care of some more business. The Hans Group 200 will continue here on Speed. We're back to Toledo Speedway, Toledo, Ohio, the Glass City, the Hans Group 200, part of the Arca Remax Series, scheduled for 2004. 
During that last caution flag period, Jim, we saw a few of the guys taking the opportunity to pit, including Jason Jarrett, who said he might just do that. And also Billy Venturini right there in the 25 desperately needed some. And he's going back down pit road, and A.J. Fike came down pit road as well, and second in points, man. Brent Sherman also made a trip down pit road here at Toledo. Looks like Claire Zimmerman's coming down as well. Let's check in with Don Radabaugh down up here road. Waiting on the arrival of the 25 car. He has, of course, already been on pit road once. When he was here last time, they changed all four tires and made a, a, a wedge adjustment on that car. He is, of course, back on pit road. Now they're going to work on that right front fender, beat on that $70,000 race car, and put some 200-mile tape on the central Merchant Services Chevrolet, but uh, other than the war wound with four fresh skins, they should be good to go. Lindsay? I'm here with Mike Allgaier, Justin Allgaier's father, Justin Iger of the uh, 86 car. I know you said that Justin races dirt tracks mainly. Looks like he's doing pretty good tonight. What's the strategy he's got going on out there? Our strategy is to run 200 laps if possible. Um, just try and bring it, bring it home. Uh, and uh, go on to the next race. Uh, he's trying to stay calm out there. It's, we had a little bit of sprinkles and, uh, you know, just trying to stay calm and, and run good solid laps. Justin Allgaier currently in second position. Well, and as silly as that might sound, just running 200 laps in a race like this is a huge part of it, Jim, because as the old saying says, to finish first, first you must finish. And in a racetrack like this where there can be so many cautions and a lot of physical action on the racetrack, you've got to survive. You've got to keep your car clean to get to the very end when you can actually race for the win. And knowing that we've got some cars to lap down to keep that U.S. Air Force Pontiac in the hunt really gets this team pumped up. So if they did make a pit strategy, they may be in a position as a young team to do a monkey see, monkey do situation and get a great finish out of it because if Frank Kimmel comes down pit road I would bet these guys are watching closely so they can stay in sync with some of the better performers here in Arca it's only his fourth start one of the big things said at the drivers meeting today was gentlemen please race each other cleanly and be like gentlemen out there tonight because we do have so much racing in such a short period of time they want to have a full field when they get to Des Moines on Monday and some of these teams are taking these very same race cars to Des Moines I mean a couple of the guys are saying we have an intermediate car we have a short track car we're going to run this car as much as we can so they've got to get ready for the dirt track on monday in the coin again on labor day great great annual event we got to get ready for a green flag once again and got it on lap 46 and richardson starts not as good as they were early on and that car just not stuck to the bottom as good as the 86 that runs in second place starting to look to the inside a little bit. Hiding his time. Notice that Jack Rippeson, that silver black 70 unsponsored Chevy is up off the white line. Lap after lap, if that car continues in that groove, look for Algaier to stick his nose in there because he knows Frank Kimmel isn't going to wait too long either. Well, or at least Kimmel's going to make you think he's not <laughs> waiting. He'll put the pressure on you to see if you can make the mistake for him, especially if you got a young driver like the two in front of him. He'll try to apply the pressure and see if he can force him into mistakes. It's a big mirror full seeing that port symbol and advanced auto parts across the, the uh, Good. hood. And guess what? Around again we go. And that is T.J. Bell, rookie point leader coming into this event. Looking for a solid run. He said, man, I'd love to have a top five finish. We have a car capable of winning some races before the year's out. Tough break for that team. And unfortunately, TJ gave you a good look at what the bars inside of the sheet metal look like. He's stripped away a lot of the bodywork. Oh, looks like Harmon got into him. And that car looked like it had a little hitch in the giddy up going to turns one and two. Perhaps something went away for TJ Bell. Just a bit off the gas. Harmon had nowhere to go and tap it from behind. That was Mike Harmon in the sixth car. Downstairs to Don. Alongside Kathy Venerini, mother of Billy Venery, another family affair and second and third generation stuff and all that. Uh, you've been very busy so far on pit road twice. Can you tell us more? Well, at the start of the race, somebody uh, missed a gear and Billy ran into them and then he got hit from behind. So we have some damage done to the front end of the car and uh, we're trying to get that opened up so this way he doesn't overheat. Is the car still working okay though? He says it's fine, you know, so we don't have to make any chassis changes, and we just change tires and send them back out. You're in 19th. Will this be your final stop then? Are you good to go? Pardon? 
You're in 19th position. Are you done pitting for the night? Probably not. We'll probably pit one more time. It will depend on the weather. Everything depends on the weather, doesn't it? That's Kathy Venerati. Well, we've had quite a few caution periods in the first 50 laps here so far today. Five of them, I believe. Let's take a look back. And this was the first one. Garrity in the two car getting turned around. And he was involved in a couple. In fact, with this one, too, with the 26 of Brad Smith. And then we have the 65 car, Brian Campbell involved in one. And then Andy Belmont and the one got together with the 94 car, GR Smith. And then Mike Harmon just got into the back of the 08 machine of TJ Bell out of Sparks, Nevada. That's a quick recap of why we've done actually too many laps under yellow here in the first 50, huh? We're going to get open here. We're going to break it wide open, 40, 50 laps, see if Josh Richards can hang on to these guys. If Josh can hang on to that lead, man, what a great boost for that team. We mentioned that he's run really on a shoestring. This team was put together because Josh was hired to put this body together, this car together in Michigan. Josh and his buddy Greg went up to the shops of uh, John Bailey and they said, you know what? You guys did such a good job, Josh. Why don't you try to race that car with us in Toledo? You asked Donnie what his son's been doing when he has been racing. He says he's been trying to work in racing and trying to avoid getting a real job just so he can have a job in racing, which tends to allow you to break free to go racing when you need to. And we're back at it. Restart, lap 53. Well, that time, Josh got a real good start. Hope it was in about a car length and a half gap between him and second place. Battle for second continues with Algaier in the 86 and Kimmel in the 46. Facing each other around as they try to reach back up to Josh Richardson. These two cars, Jim, pretty much running the same line through the corners, both stuck down to the bottom. Looks like they may be clicking off some laps because they are making time now in fourth place running number 64 of Josh Allison. Allison brushed the Rick backstretch well a lap ago behind these guys. So if I'm Frank Kimmel and I got those Hoosiers out of the car to maybe go past halfway, third might be okay right now. It's pretty hard to wear out a pair of these Hoosiers. Frank was telling me this afternoon in the garage area. Oh, ah, he's taking a look inside. And then the slower car comes up in the way of Garrett Liberty, so that'll alter that attack. But Frank said if you put a fresh set of these Hoosiers on, they're real quick for about the first 10 laps, faster than anybody else's. Then after that, they tend to settle down, and everybody's pretty quick for quite a while. It is pretty hard to really just wear them out. But one of the reasons why you'll take new tires later on is because it also allows you to get your car set back right, because you can redo your stagger, dial your car back in, and make your run for the end. Done. Uh, pit side with Brent Sherman, who's got a world of trouble here. You see the crew going to work on the 44 car. They're going to try to pull the radiator out. He's got some major front end damage. The motor's off, and it doesn't look good. This will be a lengthy stop for sure. He got into someone, not sure who, but he's got trouble here, and uh, the car's going to overheat because he's going to need a new radiator, among many other pieces and parts in the Hickory Farm. Gentlemen, there are about 400 people here from Hickory Farms watching this race tonight. Second in points, Brent felt the pressure to perform here, and unfortunately, he made a pit stop under yellow, and it came right back in on the restart, so he may have gotten into a car just ahead on the restart to cause that damage. Yeah, his team put on a big uh, function last night at a local restaurant where a lot of us uh, went and had a good time. Some great ribs. There's Sirio in the 42 car up to fourth place in his first run with the ARCA Remax Series at yellow number 42 with the white numbers. They came up here and tested and were absolutely blazingly quick around this racetrack. In fact, they're going to stay over tomorrow night and test to run their Chicago setup. So we'll see the 42 car again in Chicago. They're planning on sticking around to do some testing here tomorrow. They're not going to go to DeCoin. And what a better way to do it. He has a very veteran crew chief, very much a st stable environment for this youngster. Chris Serio again, first arc to start. Another impressive run. This year we saw a lot of youngsters. Ryan Hempel come on the scene in the Arca Remax series. We saw Kyle Bush win at Daytona. The youngster by the name of Joe, Joey Miller won a race. So perhaps these youngsters are finding out that this Arca series is certainly the place to show your muscle. Josh Allison in that 64 car. Running in fifth. Oh, and we got problems over in turn three, including a little bit of flame out of the bottom of Billy Venturini's number 25. He's got the window net down. 
the engine bay on fire a little bit. Billy trying to hustle out of the car. He's trying to keep his foot on the brake so it doesn't slide down the hill and unbuckle himself and get out. Unofficially 16th at the time of this incident. We heard the tire squeals through our excellent audio setup here at Toledo Speedway. But man, what a tough day getting worse for Billy. He thought this race was his to win. They've circled on the counter since May. And they're going for the lead late in the going and got the black flag. Fortunately, he's out in OK. Stay with us. We're under our sixth caution of the night here at Toledo. Saturday night on speed, pit bull, no softballs, no sugar coating, no impartiality. Just opinions, accusations, and plenty of debate. It's all a part of pit bull. 30 minutes where the gloves come off and NASCAR's top pit reporters bat about the latest news and rumors. Catch pit bull Saturday night, 6.30 Eastern, only on speed. Well, the caution was caused by this young man, Billy Venturini's car going into the wall down near turn number three. and catching on fire a little bit, which made Billy scamper out of it. Look at the blaze as he slid to a stop and turn three. No idea as to why that happened, Jim. But all the smoke before the car even stopped into the flames was already well back in the corner. I wonder since he had that nose damage earlier, if something got knocked loose, maybe an oil line or something, that oil spilled out, and that's what got the car loose as he slid away. Let's check in with Don. Hey guys, with Billy Venerini, you had a host of things go wrong tonight. A couple of unscheduled pit stops, and now this. What exactly happened out there? <laughs> I don't know. I, we got to the st restart line or the start line at the beginning of the race, and Frank brake checked me. I don't know. I, I'm tired of his crap. I mean, he's always doing stuff like that, trying to keep young guys down. And I'm so just that's tired. what originally caved in the front end. Uh, yeah, exactly. And then we just fought it all night long, and and, and I'm just tired of it. Did that car cause the car to overheat, possibly, get into the radiator? Heck yeah, it did. Uh, that's the only reason we overheated. Uh, I don't know. I don't I don't know what the deal was. I mean, Justin and uh, the two rookies went with no problem, and the veteran goes and stops. I mean, I don't know what his deal was. It just, it's not right, and uh, tired of it. Yeah, I can tell. That's Billy Venerini done early tonight at Toledo Speedway. Oh, we might need to get uh, Billy on Pitbull because he's obviously not afraid to voice his opinion. The thing about it, though, is short track tempers. These guys know the deal. Billy Venerini, third in points, really running for a championship, and maybe there's a slight frustration there because this would have been his best shot at perhaps capturing a victory after a strong run back in May. They have the same car. They had a very strong mindset coming into tonight. Well, one of the reasons why he's going to center his frustrations on Frank Kimmel so quickly is because of the battle they had here back in May, where the two of them did get together, and uh, Billy got black flag for it and uh, cost him his first shot at a win. Lindsay. The 08 car of TJ Bell just came in twice. The first time they came in, they changed both right side tires, brought him in again to do left side tires. And here you see him again. Part of the problem is he was hit by the six car and they had to pull up the grill a little bit to help him out. It looks like they were doing something on the right side of the car. They also had some damage there, but uh, they said that six car hit us pretty bad. We're just trying to fix him up and make him good to go. And he's going to roll back out. Looking at the scoring monitor, it looks like Tim Mitchell's night is done in the zero. And the 28 of Mike Buckley out of Ann Arbor, Michigan, the Kelly Tire Chevy, listed as out. And Mike's been in a tight battle for 10th with Daryl Basham, so that's a, that's a big blow to him as he's trying to gain valuable points. Norm Benning kind of snuck in there after his third place run in Springfield. So, no, they don't have a chase for the championship cut off in the ICA Remax series, but these teams are fighting for every dollar at season-ending awards. And uh, certainly a big blow for that team as they had to take a provisional to make the show and out very early here in this 200 lapper. And we're still working the yellow. Tucked in behind that pace truck. We're working lap 70 being completed. And Josh Richardson so far has done a great job of Fending off all the attacks on these restarts, which is usually one of the best opportunities to get around somebody. And Ralphie's led every lap since lap one. It's lap 70 now. Everyone that I talked to said, well, Kimmel's going to set the pace. Richardson had a great qualifying lap, but he's proven that he's got something here for these ARCA veterans. The Wham JJ Motorsport Chevy 
Again, that black and silver paint job. Yeah, that is a Kevin Harvick paint job. It's the real thing. This body came from Richard Chubbs Racing, a full body cut off. They had to update this chassis. And uh, again, the chassis dates back to 1999, 2000. So it's not the freshest piece in the bunch, but certainly the fastest thus far tonight. So Josh has led all 70 laps so far tonight. Hopefully we'll have some more of them under green when we come back to the hands crew, 200. Back to green on lap 73, and Josh Richardson got this all, oh, and look at Serial, the 42. He gets into the 86. Oh, that's caution right, Kimmel. Again. Oh, it is Kimmel. And we're under caution again. That was a wild restart. We just came back to green. Frank Kimmel was sideways off of turn three. He lost some time. That's his brother, Bill. And man, they are not happy right now with Serio in his first arc of start. Well, Serio came right up into third and made a strong run. The, the green came out and Richardson got a jump, but Kimmel came right with him. Started to look around the outside as it came to turn three. Things started to back up a little bit, and that's where Serio came into the mix. Here they are coming down to the three. Look at Kimmel get loose. Serio's right there. He poured it into turn three a ton, too, as he went a little bit high. Then down here's where it got interesting. Into turn number one, Serio not quite on the bottom, Kimmel not quite on the top, and they make contact here. And Man, they're lucky more cars didn't get involved. Brian well, Kozlowski, however, top five runner thus far tonight, got a piece up in the black 29. Now you can see Serio had that thing he was a little cockeyed. Yeah, he was trying to dirt track it through there a little bit, but he was halfway up alongside of him. And they were both running pretty hard down in the corner. It looks like they ran out of screw. Well, you heard the contact, and around they both went. That was Brian Keselowski trying to say, "Can I sneak through here?" The answer is no. You got a piece of him. Boy, Frank Kimmel, three laps in the finish here in May. Soldier back to a 10th place run after getting spun out. It's a long night for these boys. We see Bill now has the helmet on, so that means we're going to see the point leader coming down pit road. See some damage to the left rear. Boy, we had seen Frank laying back and laying back. That last green flag came out. Man, he went after it hard, and he really reeled Richardson in as they came down into uh, turn number one, or three, I should say. And he just went in a little bit deeper, and Richardson got through there well. Lindsay. Frank Kimmel just pulled into the pit. He has significant damage to the left rear quarter panel. You can see they're changing the right side tires. You can see in the back there, guys, on the left back side, that quarter panel is just all banged in. There he goes. Well, Kimmel, Kimmel gets his fresh tires here now. Lap 77, perhaps a little bit earlier than the team wanted. Some of these front-running teams we talked to said maybe about lap 100. I don't think he had a choice because of the damage, but we'll have fun watching Frank Kimmel make his way through with fresh Hoosier tires on this car. And that doesn't sound like the car's 100%. If that was the in-car audio we got off of Frank Kimmel's car. There's the 86 car, which had been running up in second place for most of the night, Justin Allgaier. He had pitted. And that's why at the beginning there, I actually thought it was him because that car of the 46 looks very similar from a distance. But uh, he is actually back to 15th now after that restart and the pit stop. And there's Kimmel back to pit road again. Now let's take one more look at it. Notice how high Serio got into turn number one. Kimmel again, they had a harried lap coming back under green. So both these guys a bit out of shape. And unfortunately, they both spun out in turn one and Keselowski got a piece of them. Lindsay? You guys just saw Kimmel come back in again. It looked like they changed the left side tires. They added fuel, and they were still trying to work on that banged up rear back quarter panel. Well, Sirio got held at the start finish line here and uh, is all the way back now in 23rd and listed as uh, a lap down, 24th actually now. So Chris can have a little work to get back. Darrell Basham, a lap car, number 34 on the inside of our race leader, again in that block for 10th and points. He had a 19th place run here, and really a top 15, top 20 run could do big, big bonuses for that young man as his arch rival in the points and, and good friend. They share a lot of parts. He's already out of this race, and it's interesting to watch Mike Buckley on pit road, watch his buddy Darrell Basham get a lot of points on him on this restart. Back to green. Boy, again, we scatter him on the start. Looks like Gibson had trouble, and we're going to stay under yellow. 
the sprint car race now we call a no start ralph it looks like nobody got up to speed there as they were told one to green and then the yellow kind of came out and some guys slowed and some didn't as mark gibson there in the 59 he's got front end damage Going through the gears, it looked like a missed shift there by the all-red 64 of Josh Allison really bunched the field up behind him. And he got into the back of the five of Bobby Gerhardt did Mark Gibson because that started to stack him up a little bit. There's Mark making his way down to uh, pit lane. Mark got his first ARCA win at Gateway when they opened up that racetrack over in St. Louis, and that's the car he won that race with. It's his favorite race car. He's gathered up all the cars and he won the four races that he's won in ARCA competition. He has them all in his collection and he still races them. His last one was at Atlanta last year, and he's pretty pumped up. He said, I need to run this series for a couple more years. I want to make 300 race starts. He and Frank Kimmel, if they run every race from now until then, will both have 300 starts together sometime next season. He think that's a pretty cool deal. He said, Iggy Katona, Frank Kimmel, I'm in pretty good company. 94 having some troubles as well. GR Smith getting going in the right direction. It's one of Bobby Gerhardt's cars, and GR is a Northeast modified guy. He raced, raced weekly at New Egypt Speedway. He said, you know what, I need to further my career. Let's go arc racing. And he talked to Bobby Gerhardt to give him a ride at Lake Erie and here at Toledo. Stay with us. Hands Group 200 continuing on speed when we come back after these words. Speed Channel's coverage of the ARCA Remax Series is brought to you by Gladiator Garage Works by Whirlpool Corporation. Gladiator Garage Works, it's time to rethink the garage. Don Radebaugh. Well, how about those two front runners? Can you believe it? A 22-year-old kid from the pole leading the way. A couple of Joshes, Josh Richardson and Josh Allison, 16 years young, following Richardson around Toledo Speedway. A couple of remarkable rookies up front. Let's talk to the father of Josh Richardson, Donnie. From a father's angle, how is it? Oh, he's doing a real good job. You know, I mean, this is a father's proudest day when watch your son lead a race like this. and. Uh... Just got to thank John Bailey here. It's his race car. He gave Josh this opportunity, and uh, it's a real good one. And it's a team effort by all of them. Josh has been up here, built this car for John, and it's done a good job so far. All right, very good. Richardson will crew chief Ken Schrader at the DeCoin Dirt Mile on Monday. Back under green. Here we go, gentlemen. And Josh Richardson had his dad in the stand and doing the setups that worked for Schrader. Schrader won this race back in Maine. Here in Toledo, his only Arco win this season. So. As far as experience, those boys have a bunch, and I bet you Schrader's going to be looking forward to the dirt on Monday. It's interesting, Donnie Richardson uh, saying that this is his proudest day watching his son run so well. He, he also told us earlier today, Jim, that his biggest frustrations in racing have been watching his son struggle to get good rides and good equipment and get the brakes. Uh, so maybe tonight might be the beginning of something like that. And guess what? We're under yellow again. GR 87 Smith. of the 200 completed it under a yellow again. Brian Keselowski saw the fireworks before the race and thought he'd make his own. Unfortunately, he had something lock up going into turn three. A lot of showers of sparks. Again, he's involved in an incident with Frank Kimmel running in the top five. Well, let's go downstairs once again to Lindsay. Thanks, guys. I'm standing here with Mark Gibson of the 59 car. They just brought the car behind the wall. Mark, what happened to you out there? Uh, I don't know what happened on the restart. 70 car, he takes off, then he hits the brakes and takes off again, backs everybody up, and then they just stop getting into one. I got in the back of Gerhardt. I don't know. It's but you're confident you're going to get back out there? Pardon? You're confident you're going to get back out? Yeah, we'll get back out, but we had, you know, we had a really good race car. It came from 19th and just I thought it really had a chance to win the race as good as the car was driving, and now we're, you know, laps down another bad point stand. Guys, back to you. Well, as frustrated as he is right now, all he's got to do is look over onto the other side of the car on the dash. He's got a picture of his daughter. I'm sure that'll cheer him up a little bit. Let's take a look again at what happened here to Gibson. That's where everything stacked up a little bit. He got into the back of Bobby Gerhardt. Really a victim of circumstances. saw that bright red beacon on the dashboard. That is the race safe light, so everybody else is back under caution, but unfortunately, that little stack up cost him a lot of room. Now, keep in mind, he's in the top eight, top 10 in points. He came into this event, did Mark Gibson eighth in points, and Todd Bauscher, having one of his better runs this season, currently in fourth, can gain valuable points. Todd came into this event ninth in points, looking for his fifth top 10 run. Brent Sherman was really hoping for a good run tonight. Don Radebaugh, unfortunately, he's done. 
Yeah, no kidding, Ralph. Talk about top front runners in points. Brent Sherman is currently second in points, but you're out of the race. That's not going to help. What happened? Yeah, unfortunately, um, you know, we were on the third row, and somehow the third row got ch or the first two rows checked up. You know, and we're hearing a lot of that tonight. Brake checking, checking up. What's going on? I don't know. It was Frank Kimmel and Billy, Billy Venturini in front of me, and uh, right at the start of the race, they're all they're both stopped in front of me, and you know, it's just frustrating. We we. We uh, broke the radiator, lost the water, and um, broke the motor. But you know, I, I, I got to I got to take my head off to Will Langhorn, my teammate. Um, first race ever in a stock car, uh, qualified in the top 15. He's doing a great job out there. I just wish it would have been uh, a better night for us. And you know, hopefully we don't take too big of a hit in the uh, cha championship. But um, you know, it's kind of bittersweet. This is our first uh, first race as a two-car program. Unfortunately, one of the cars is out. And, happens to be me. Well, Billy Venerini's out, too, and he was third in points, so this could really shake it up. Yeah, you know, actually, that, that's kind of lucky. I hate to, uh, to uh, say that, you know, I hate to bring bad luck on competitors, but fortunately for us, he had some bad luck. Hopefully, we can hold on to second place in the points and uh, finish the year out strong. Ready for some? Ready? Okay, back to you guys. All right, Don, thank you. Hopefully, he will. There's Don, you know, there's Daryl Basham in the uh, 34 car. He's sitting... Uh, Tenth of the points. I asked him how old this car was. He has a Cotton Owens chassis. <laughs> is that how old this thing is? <laughs> he has a lot of fun when he comes racing. Does that 34? Back to green. Getting close to the halfway mark, and Josh Richardson has led every lap here in Toledo tonight. Bobby Gerhardt in the Lucas Oil Chevy is in the third position as this whole pack running for the top 10 in points, or top 10 in the race, excuse me, after turn number two, and they're really starting to pick up the pace here as the uh, track and the wetness appears to be gone right now. The only thing we got to watch now with Josh Richardson is what does he do for pick strategies? We look at Bobby Gerhardt's number five, which runs in third. As we said, Richardson's crew not having raced much. They're only racing Arca tonight. Obviously, not a lot of pit strategy opportunities to be played out. Not a lot of pit work by the pit crew. And indeed, at this point in the race, they're not going to come down the pit road by themselves. So they really have the pressure to put on to make a great stop. They may just do a one-stop race with the number of caution laps we had earlier. No question on fuel. They may have enough fuel to go the entire 200 laps. Well, Allgaier has pitted in the 86. He was very strong early on as we continue to watch the number five of Bobby Gerhardt, the black and white number five of Lucas back entry. And they're putting a lap on Jason Jarrett, who just beat the pace car on the pit road under caution. And, boy, I bet you the four of the towing props for the guy fourth in points heading in tonight. Yeah, he's buried all the way back in 18th is Jason Jarrett. A tough night for him. They're on board with Frank Kimmel, who's had some uh, bumps and bangs through the night. He's stuck back in 12th, and Allgaier is just one spot ahead of him in 11th. Lindsay. I'm standing by with Bill Kimmel, Frank Kimmel's crew chief. Bill, Frank was battling right out front with the 42 car. Now he's back in 14. What were you guys able to change to help him gain back position? to fix the damage when he got some on there. He says the car is doing fine. He doesn't feel like it's doing it. We've heard it a whole lot. Uh, it looks pretty bad. So, man, a lot of parts car has been doing really good all night long. And he was just having a bad time. We need to run some green flag lap. He's with all the yellows. And, uh, I think we'll have a shot at it if we do that. Guys. Well, they just might. Running in 12th right now. And as we said, the two cars up the front need to come in. Serio in the 42 behind the 70 is actually two laps down now because they have pitted as well. And Chris is running in 20th position. He went blasting fast. Josh Allison was running second on the restart. And again, with the lap cars on the inside, this is his chance to make up a lap here if Richardson allows him to. At this point, I'd say, why don't you go ahead? He has fresher rubber. Richardson has a nice 1.45 second lead. Josh Allison right here in the frame and then all red unsponsored 64. Boy, the one thing Josh Richardson does not want to do is let that 42 car cause him a problem. He needs to, as you said, just let him go. He's two laps down. And 
we have approached the halfway sign. You see the crossed green and white flags, and we're getting reports that rain is closing in and in the area. So the good news is we're halfway home, which would make this race official as we've crossed through to 101 laps complete now. And Richardson is calling every Indian casino in the area saying, hey guys, would you mind doing a little dance for us? We gotta get some Native Americans out here to get that rain down here. They wanna win this race bad. Well, it's been all around us all afternoon and we're under yellow again with another car over in turns one and two, actually two cars involved. Frank Kimmel again. Kimmel was in that one as well, wasn't he? Wow. If you're in the top 10 in points and you're in the Arca Remax Series, you may not want to race again in Toledo Speedway for quite some time. All these guys in the top 10 have had troubles tonight, whether it be a lap down or behind the pit wall. It's well, crazy. There's the 84 Claire Zimmerman out of Denver, PA, the 84 Lumber Chevy. We'll be right back. We are back to the Hams Group 200. That was not a pass for the lead. The 42 of Chris Serio just gets his lap back. That car is quick. Unfortunately, he's two laps down. 107 of 200 laps are completed. There is rain closing in. Josh Richardson in the black and silver number 70 has led every lap so far tonight. And the 64 of Josh Allison is right on his tail. And these two youngsters, Jim, have been running very quick all night, and neither one of them is pitted. And keep in mind that Josh Allison for the last two years ran dirt late models. So if this race gets to the point where the precipitation comes down, guess who has more experience on the dirt? The man in second. Put your money on the red 64. And Indeed, there's moves to be made, and the rain comes down before the caution comes And down. if there's rain in the area, I'm not pitting. I don't oh. know about you. Absolutely not. But I know also that my car, as we've crossed the halfway point, the handling has changed, things are going away. I might need to pit. But right now, these two youngsters are having to battle it out. Well, let's find out just how good that lead car is. No, no, no. They get the gather down in turn one. The top two cars are together and around. Allison got inside of Richardson, and they both are sitting the wrong way on the racetrack. Well, they started to feel the pressure and started running a little bit harder, Jim, and that's when it reached out and bit them. Well, as we talked about precipitation, Josh Allison had a great restart. Josh Richardson's car was not as quick as he was on the prior restart, so perhaps there was a little bit of a window. We talked about the black 70 of Richardson not on the bottom, and Allison looked to the low, and boy, what a bad, bad break for those two youngsters looking both for their first victory here in the Arca Remax Series. Right in the corner, look, watch. Lift uh, it off the ground in the turn number one. It looks like Allison just went in a little too deep. He had the wheels turned. He wasn't going to make it. And poor Josh Richardson, after a great night of racing, sees it go slipping away. Well, that puts Bobby Gerhardt's number five right into the lead with a 21 of Todd Bowser out of Springfield, Ohio, right up into second. What a tough break for Josh Richardson. He had done everything right all night. And now the 70 is listed in 15th. Come get those tires now? I would say you'd have to, yeah. If, if they're gonna make up any positions on lead lap cars, they gotta do it with fresh rubber. Make sure nothing's rubbing on that all steel body. See the 42 car, the yellow 42. He's made up one lap now. He's up to 19th. That's a fast car. Boy, Serio has been really, man, he was really pushing Richardson. Richardson didn't allow him by. He just drove by him at their restart. And Gerhardt has been driving very smart tonight, sitting right there, right in position. And now I don't believe Bobby Gerhardt is pitted. No, I don't believe he has either. I'm confirmation out of that from the pits. But I don't believe that Lucas Oil number five has been on pit road. So now he's in the position with 112 laps complete knowing that there's rain in the area. <laughs> and, and, you know, some of the crew chiefs that you talk to, Jim, they tell you, yeah, you know, you, you could get there, especially with all the yellows we've had tonight. Fuel is not going to be an issue. It's really tire conservation. And Justin Allgaier did pit about lap 66 or so. He's made his way back to fifth. I believe the four cars ahead of him, three cars at least, had not pitted to this point. And there's a 70 on pit road. Lindsay. Guys, young Josh Allison just pulled into his pit box and they're adding fuel. They're changing the right side tires. They grab the hammer so that they can try to pull out some of that damage up by the right front. Don, now to you. 
70 car. Josh Richardson on pit road. They're going to go with all four tires still working on the right side. And of course, the damage is here on the left side. You can probably see it the left front fender. They'll pull that away while they change Hoosier tires on the left side. No adjustments necessary. The car is absolutely perfect. Josh Richardson has his work cut out for him now. That car needs to be perfect as they get ready to go. Back to Lindsay. You can see they're still working. They uh, just finished working on the left side of the tire. They made a chassis adjustment also and then sent him down and away. So the two guys that were running first and second now back out on the racetrack. The list a little bit farther down the line looks like 15th and 16th. 15th will belong to the 70 car. And they're still on the lead lap. Frank Kimmel again was involved in that last spin. He came down pit road again. He's back in 12th, so we'll see how these fresher tire shot cars will make their way back through. But we mentioned weather in the area. The track is a bit slick. I believe Josh Richardson lost a lot of ground when he let Serial go through on that restart. He went to the outside line, lost a lot of traction, may have got some buildup on those tires and allowed Allison to close. Frank Kimmel, you're on board with him. He was working his way up through. He's still stuck in 12th. And we've seen the 86, who was running in 11th, has climbed up seven spots to fourth. But that car is coming on strong. Justin Alkire really starting to show what he's made of. The five car, we're getting confirmation out of, pit, out of the, the booth down pit, pit road. I'll get it out. The five has not been on pit road. Tenth start for Bobby Gerhardt, who again saw Blake Feast go to victory lane in his race car. Kyle Kristoloff will be in this car at Chicagoland. So He's working a season development deal with Hendrick Motorsports. And boy, what a great win that would be for him as he's been so strong in the super speedways. Gerhardt, a strong competitor just about anywhere here in Arco Remax Series. Back to green. Bobby Gerhardt, a big part of that Hendrick Motorsports development program. what's one of the biggest things he's learned from being a part of that and he said it's the attention to details he said you know sometimes you've been so focused on what you do and you think you really have a handle on how to do this racing game we've been at it for so many years he said but i got involved with those guys and i realized how many things i hadn't paid attention to that are so small he said i've been wearing out the local business supply stores buying folders and notepads he said i'm taking notes like a maniac we've had to build extra shelves on our war wagons just to stock all the information and records we've been gathering up and every racer from party to party one can understand he said you know what? i try to remember setups try to do it as best i could he's now on the computer the day after the race downloading what he had thought wise in the race to make certain that he didn't forget what changes he made to that race car Lindsay, i guess you can't teach an old dog new tricks talking about what luck. He's been just luck down here today. I'll tell you what, that car he has, he's now in second place. That is the same car that he had in Erie. And that's where he ran in the top 10 all day. He was actually in fifth place at the end, and that's when his rear end broke. So he says if he could just win this race, he feels like the curse of his bad luck is over. So Bobby Gerhardt continues to lead. We're watching the battle back in second place, the 21. Todd Bowser holding down the position right now in the GFS Marketplace Board. Stay with us. We're coming back for more from Toledo after this. On speed, tune in for Speed News Saturday, a roundup of all the action from the world of motorsports. Catch Speed News Saturday, Saturday night, 7 Eastern, only on Speed. There's your race leader here at the Hands Group 200 here at Toledo Speedway. You're seeing the action on Speed Channel, the home of the Arca Remax Series. 129 of the scheduled 200 laps are in the books on this high bank tap mile, and Bobby Earhart's number five continues to lead. A.J. Fike in the 11 runs in second place, and Jim coming up through the field in the 86 cars, Justin Guy out of Springfield, Illinois. These two cars have pitted. The lead car has not pitted, and the 86 is arguably one of the quickest cars on the racetrack. And Allgaier really has sliced his way through, and A.J. Fike used an outside pass on Todd Bauscher. He's got a very fast race car. He's only got tires that are about 40 laps better than our race leader right now, and he's making a horse. Goes around. Boy, why did I say that then? I jinxed him. AJ Fike is in the wall in turn three. And the 
Murray Farms Pontiac has big damage to the backside. Andy Hilleberg in the effort here for the 11 car, trying to make it through the season. AJ Fike, a full campaign. Boy, what a rough break. He was running as high as second here. Now down the back stretch. Actually, that's, look at that. The car just washed right up on him. Something had to go away. Maybe his brakes, perhaps the tire went down. Hard to tell. You can see all this stuff. That's all that grease sweep that you see over there was from Mandy, or, uh, Billy Venturini's car earlier today. All kinds of problems with that 11 car now. Tough, tough break for AJ Fight. Well, the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series is back under the lights next week when we head to Richmond. And look out, because Tony Stewart is looking to take truck win number three. Back in the truck and ready to mix it up, Stewart will bump and bang with the truck stars in an attempt at his third truck win. The NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, Richmond, live on primetime, Thursday, 8.30 Eastern, only on speed. Jason Jarrett idling around under the yellow. We'll be right back. Bobby Gerhardt, the race leader, pitted under that yellow. Let's go down to Don Redabaugh for an update. Yeah, they came in and they changed right side tires, made a chassis adjustment as well, but uh, they thought about actually staying out as the strategy played out in the race with all the cautions, but Billy Gearhart got a little too nervous, and I hope we're here. Maybe we can talk to him while we're at it, but Billy, I know you were getting a little nervous on fuel. Could you have made it, or was it just too close? Well, it was really close. The car, believe it or not, keeps working better and better. We got to the lead. Bobby said, Bobby said, you know, the car feels great, but, you know, we're second in owner points with the car, and I would have hated to run out. Plus, we're a little loose on entry, and we thought we'd put some new right side tires on, make an air pressure adjustment, and go back and get them. We'll get back to the front, Don. Okay, we'll keep an eye on it. The two-time Daytona ARCA 200 winners, Bobby and Billy Gearhart, running very well tonight at Toledo Speedway, short track style. Want to know what racing's really like? Then check out MBS 24-7. From checker to green, it's the real world of racing. Get up close and personal with Casey Kane, David Stremme, Casey Atwood, and Tim Fidua. MBS 24-7, Monday nights, 8 Eastern, only on speed. Lindsay Zarniak. I'm here with Cal Bo for AJ Fikes crew chief. And Cal, I know this must be so frustrating for AJ because you said he was just getting his confidence. What happened to him out there? I don't know. He must have cut a left rear tire down or something because he was going along fine, no problems, and it just came around. So, it's frustrating. We need to start finishing races, and we're not catching any luck at all. Back to you guys. All right, so Justin Allgaier is your leader now in the 86. The 21 card of Todd Bowser, who started 16th tonight, runs in second. The 46 of old Frank Kimmel <laughs> has marched his way back up to third and right where he wants to be as we go back to green. 136 completed. 137 completed. And already up to second comes Kimmel to the inside of Allgaier. Allgaier, 17 years of age, started high school again this past week, and I'm telling you, this kid is really, really impressive. He gave the spot to Frank Kimmel, but man, is he going to run through the field to this point. And there was no lesson in a textbook that you could have read that would have taught you what Kimmel just did to him there. That's his veteran experience. Passed him on the outside and tucked it right back in line to the advanced auto parts port Ford driver. Kimmel again, pounding now. The car of Serio, he wants to get him back a lap down. Serio's made up two laps now. Serio is back on the lead lap and running in 15th in that 42 car. That's the yellow car in the frame here. He's not the leader. This is the leader, Frank Kimmel. I got to tell you, Serio's car is pretty quick, though. 42 has been pretty strong. Unfortunately, he's right now at the tail end of the lead lap. Kimmel. No slaps either. That 46 is running pretty good lap times. And I, ma I imagine everyone has seen the charge of the 42 of Serio. So if Kimmel can't put this car lap down, he certainly wants to do that to get that man behind him. The caution comes out. Serio is definitely in the leader's serial 
If he's in 15th, he runs a 15th on the outside line. Oh, yeah. And you got to consider him a threat at this point. I mean, the laps are winding down. We're going to be sort soon have just about 50 to go. But as quick as Sirio's car has been, I don't think you want to give him an opportunity. There is the 86, and what a night Justin Allgaier has had. As had Todd Bowser in the 21, who now sits in third. The 0-8 of T.J. Bell out of Sparks, Nevada. The Brad Kemp Motorsports Chevrolet runs in fourth. 65, Ryan Campbell. He's listed in fifth after starting ninth tonight. We just saw a pop out of the red 64 of Josh Allison, certainly in the mix all night. He actually was going to lead. Now he's going to pit road. Boy, what a rough break for that young man. Had a great run early on. He's listed a lap down in 15th. There's the 08 car. Bell having a good run, sitting in fourth. Car's been beaten and battered pretty good tonight. Jim, we talked about this was going to be a physical race, and it's it's been physical in a lot of different ways. Some of the rubbing and banging on the racetrack has been a big part of it, but not all the yellows due to guys just taking other people out. And Joe Cooksey there had a very strong run, and we just got a glimpse of him. He's running in the sixth spot. That team also fighting for top ten and owner's points. Well, Sirio is pulling away from Kimmel, and I got to tell you, there was a while back when Kimmel was buried back outside of the top 20 that I wasn't so sure he was going to fight his way back into the thick of this. But, boy, he has really shown the veteran experience tonight is really paying off. Talk about adversity and overcoming adversity. Frank Kimmel involved in two spins, has the lead on the left-hand side of your screen, the black 65 of Brian Campbell. He spun as well early in the race, so he's now up to, uh, into the top five in the fourth, so a great run by him. Campbell has done a good job of getting around Bell, and he's up to fourth, and let's go back downstairs to Don. Yeah, guys, it was a great run from Josh Richardson as well till it ran out. What happened, Josh? Well, we were doing good to that moron in the 64 car, went down in turn three and wrecked me, and it tore the clutch out of our race car. We had the fastest thing here, everybody knows it. My guys worked really hard. I just can't help there's stupid people out there in this division that don't know how to race and race clean. There's a lot of fenders torn up tonight. There's a lot of tempers flaring up as well. Well, that's short track racing, but Josh, you're right. You did have the fastest car here tonight. No doubt about it. You did a good job with it. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Today's gladiator of the race winner is the number 26 team of Brad Smith Motorsports. 14th in the points with not much budget, but week in and week out, they're here and racing with the ARCA Remax Series. Tonight's gladiator of the race, Brad Smith Motorsports. Gladiator Garage Works by Whirlpool Corporation. We're back to the racing action, and Frank Kimmel's going to put Chris Serio back a lap down, and again, looks like contact is made. And the yellow is out, and Sirio is parked. Now, we didn't have a good look at it. That was from on board from Kimmel's car. Sirio had gotten himself back on the lead lap. It moved all the way up to 13th and was pulling away from Kimmel. But while we were in commercial break, Jim, it looked like things started to go wrong with Sirio's car, and it started to smoke. Oh, big time loose there as he got two wheels down underneath. He got him on the grass. Again, there's real no apron here at Toledo, so he went into turn one trying to hold his spot, and boy, he pancaked with Kimmel there. And he's had that right side smoke coming out of the exhaust pipe the last four or five laps under caution. But under green, when we were away at commercial, that pop was not part of his incident. He's got a little loose. Kimmel said, okay, I'm going to take my time and pass him. And, uh, and the problem down there in turn one was Chris Sirio made a rookie mistake and turned in too soon. He didn't realize or didn't see Kimmel up alongside of him and turned back to the left as they got to turn one and Frank had snuck up in there and was looking to make the pass to put him back a lap down and unfortunately they made contact, but fortunately for Frank, it didn't cost him. Here's another look going in the corner. Yeah, Frank was all the way down on the apron. He might have almost anticipated Serio coming down the hill and they made contact. Watch how far deep in the corner Frank is before Serio tries to go into the corner and Serio might have thought that Kimmel was going to carry him a little bit more speed into the corner. It was going to clear him by the time he turned, and Frank slowed the car back down, which he had every right to do, as he was cleanly passed. 
And unfortunately for Chris, Frank was still there. But we'll still be here when we come back from this commercial. On board with Frank Kimmel, our race leader once again here at Toledo Speedway. See if we get a word with him, Jim. Frank Kimmel, Jim Trader on the Speed Channel booth. How is that race car after that incident in turn one? Hey, what, Jim? It's speed on the heck. Uh, these guys just don't like getting past, I don't guess. Is the car clean? Is your spotter, your, your crew saying the car's all right? You don't have to pit again, do you? We're good to go to the end, we hope. If everything stays clean, we'll see what we got with this advanced auto parts car. Thanks, Frank. All right, Frank, getting ready to go back to green. 164 of the scheduled 200 are complete. 13 cars are out of it already. Lindsay. Frank Kimmel's crew chief, Bill Kimmel, is standing beside me. Bill, his run tonight has been unbelievable. Are you amazed at where he is right now? Yeah, really, I am. Uh, I can't believe the car is still rolling right now. Heck, it's beat up on all four sides. So we'll just try to run these last 35, 40 laps and make it to the end. All right, back upstairs to you guys. And back to green. And of course, if Frank can lead all of these laps to the checkered flag, Jim, that will put him past an 8,000 mile, 8,000 lap mark, I should say, of laps led in ARCA Remax competition. A staggering statistic. Amazing in, in itself, and amazing on that car. He spun twice, got hammered twice. I'm surprised that all four tires aren't flat twice already in this race. Hey, we just got word from Pit Road that Todd Bowser, under caution, running in the top five, ran out of fuel in that GFS marketplace Ford. He got down and got back on lead lap, but unfortunately, was pushed to Pit Road not under his own power. That was the 21 and 12th dog. Yeah, I was just going to report on uh, what was already discovered. Indeed, you got to have gas to go the distance. 21 ran out of gas, but I guess we already covered that. The 86 car, Justin Allgaier, runs in second, right behind Frank Kimmel. The 65 machine of Brian Campbell started ninth, runs in third. There you see it, the black car, and that's probably our best battle on the racetrack right now for second place. Campbell, the PMB sales, DJ's one stop quality car wash Chevy is very strong. It's the only car left in Vern's Law stable. Vern sold off all of his other cars, already announced his retirement this year, and man, he's really doing a wonderful job. Lindsay with more. The 86 car running in second position right now. I just talked to the crew chief who says they pitted on lap 67. They did change four fresh tires. They want to go the distance. They are so happy, obviously, with their track position. They do not want to bring him in, but they are going to be so close on fuel. And for Campbell, what a great way to debut yourself with the ARCA series. And he said pending sponsorship that you might see more of this young team as they look ahead to 2005. And battles back here as well. This one's for fourth. Bell in the 08. And Gerhardt, who led early on in the five car, now back up to fifth. And he's still not 100% from that flag football injury. Just a pickup <laughs> football game in a parking lot at Daytona at the beginning of the year. Basically just ripping his hamstring apart. Tenacity. Determination. These guys don't know anything else here in the Arca Remax series. I mean, he was out of the car. He said he got surgery on March 1st on that leg injury. Two guys later, two days later, Hendrick Motorsports calls him up and they make a deal to do some development stuff. And he said it's been a great asset to his program. He said not a lot of parts and pieces are coming his way. He's working with his own equipment and powering those young drivers that Hendrick is developing into winners here in the Arca Remax series. Bobby's brother did play professional football in the NFL and win the CFL. In fact, won a Canadian Football League championship with the Sacramento Surge, and they were going to put Bobby in a full body cast, which they did for eight days. And he called the doctor up and said, listen, either you're taking me out of this thing or I'm taking myself out of it. Sawzall. Everybody's got one in their war wagon, don't they? And it will get you out of a body cast. Stay with us. We're back to the great battle that's brewing right now for fourth here in the Hands Group 200 at Toledo Speedway. We're in the Glass City, Toledo, Ohio, with 17 to go. And Bell in the 08 holds down fourth position. And the other black car, the number five of Bobby Gerhardt, led early on tonight, runs in fifth. And these two have really been going at it, Jim, in the last few laps. And TJ Bell has not finished any better than fifth in his rookie season this year. What a great run for that team. He said they practice on 100 lap old tires. We see the tomato can peeled off of the right side door bar. He's had some issues tonight. What a great run for that California rookie. 
Earnhardt's best run so far this year was a third at Pocono, and he had a fifth at Pocono earlier on this season. So another top five here tonight would be his third top five of the year. Just 14 circuits to go. Back up front, Frank Kimmel. Boy, what a career this man has had. The only four straight championships won in ARCA competition. He's got five of them. He won the first one in 98, and then went 2000, 2001, 2002, and 2003, and well on his way to another title in 2004. Has four victories so far this year, too. This would be number five. And he's also had seven victories here at Toledo. So as far as survival, and I am extremely impressed with what the, the ex exhibition of what this team has been able to do with Kimball well, on his way to a record setting eighth victory here at Toledo Speedway. And he's a former rookie of the year in the series back in 1992. He finished second in the championship on three different occasions. I mean, they might just name the Hall of Fame for Arca right after Frank Kimball. Working his way through traffic. Up at the front early on tonight. Then got involved in some incidents. Got buried deep in the field outside of the top 20. And masterfully, and there's really no other way to put it, worked his way up through the field and has put himself back in a position to win here tonight in Toledo. And you got to consider him a strong contender. We get to DuCoin on Monday with the tour. Finished second in Springfield just a week ago to Bill Baird. In fact, it was his pit crew that helped pit Bill <laughs> Baird that week. Isn't that amazing? Some may, some may think is he's so successful he may shelter himself and build a pyramid with nothing beneath him as far as competition friendliness and, hey, I'm the leader, you got to beat me, you can't share my tools. Uh-uh, not in the Arc Arena X Series. These teams really work well together. And to tell you what kind of a guy Frank Kimmel is, the tires that he gets done using, he gives to Daryl Basham, who runs in 10th, just to help out a fellow competitor, because he knows that uh, man in 10th position, the driver car number 34, just does not have a whole lot of money. Well, Bobby Gerhardt has that fourth position, the Lucas Oil Chevy, away from T.J. Bell. Cars still out there getting the laps in, holding down fifth, trying to stay now in front of the 23 car. Joe Cooksey started 24th tonight, and Cooksey's up to six and having a pretty good run. And again, as we mentioned, Joe's always tough on the dirt, so he'll be one to watch on Monday as well. But as far as the short track racer, Cooksey's got a lot of credentials coming to the Arco Remax series. Here's the 30 car running in seven. Blount. This is his first ever ARCA start, and Bobby was telling me, he said, maybe I should have done this ARCA series about, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago. He got wrapped up in short track racing over 700 victories, and he wanted to make sure I said happy birthday to his son, Chad, who's watching tonight out in California. He's got a good run going here. Top 10 run for sure. He's crew chief Ryan Hemphill to his six victories this year for Braun Racing. Yeah, they're sitting in seven with car number 30. Meanwhile, everybody looking at the backside of the number 46 with three to go, Lindsay. Yeah, you guys, the crew for Frank Kimmel is just down here confident as can be. Other people are actually leaving the area. They, they think they have this in the bag. They are confident. And like you heard uh, Bill say before, you can't believe that he's pulling it off, but uh, this is exactly where they want to be. The last time Frank Kimmel finished outside of the, well, Outside of the top five, he finished 10th in Michigan. He's only had one nine races ago. He's only had one finish worse than 10th. Now the 20th place run earlier this year. The white flag is out. Waiting for the checkers is Frank Kimmel making his way off at turn number four. The hands group 200 goes to Frank Kimmel. His fifth ARCA Remax Series victory. And he extends his points lead in the series and sets a new record, having led over 8,000 ARCA Remax Series laps. Stay with us. We'll talk to you when we come back.
let's talk about some milestones. We talked about the 8,000 laps led. This is his 55th career win overall. That puts him firmly in second in all-time wins. He was tied with the great Jack Bowser. You are now second in all-time wins. But Frank Kimball, this car is torn up at all four corners and everywhere in between. How did you get it done? Just a lot of luck tonight, I tell you. We got run over three or four times tonight, and what a shame. And the car was really good all night long, and uh, I got to thank Advanced Auto Parts, National Port Board. I tell you what, uh, after the uh, couple of guys up front was having trouble on restarts and it was killing me, I kept messing up. Thank goodness I had a good Tex Racing transmission in there at the end. It was early paid dividends. I get away from them, but uh, Justin was really good. He raced me pretty clean all night. Woo, them guys are rough. <laughs> and that Frank Kimmel, he's pretty tough. He really is on his way to his sixth series championship. Frank Kimmel, eighth series victory at Toledo Speedway. A great night by a great driver. That's a textbook performance as to why he is a legend in the making. Here's a look in the top 10 and now onto the top 20 to work our way through the field. Boy, that was just an impressive, nice run by Christy Passport. You get a chance to talk about Christy much tonight, and she ends up at 11. Her best run prior to this was 17th here, so she'll take that. Brent Sherman, that's not what he needed to see in the point standings, Boy. finishing 30th tonight. Billy Vanarini just two spots ahead of him, and Mike Buckley trying to hang on to 10th in the points, 33rd tonight. And Mike Garrity in the Hans Group car comes home 32nd here at the Hans Group 200. We're not done yet. Stay with us. Speed Channel's coverage of the ARCA Remax Series is brought to you by Remax. Outstanding agents, outstanding results, and by Gladiator Garage Works. Gladiator Garage Works, official garage of ARCA, is proud to announce that the Gladiator Pit of the Race winner is Frank Kimmel's crew for battling back and getting their man to victory lane tonight. Gladiator, it's time to rethink the garage. Lindsay. 18-year-old Justin Allgaier was not letting go tonight. How were you able to stay out of all that trouble to get this great second-place finish? Well, actually, I'm not really sure myself. Uh, this uh, Hoosier Tire Midwest Air Force the Automotive uh, Pontiac was awesome tonight. And, and I got to give it to, to Larry Moore and the crew, man. They uh, got me in and out of pit stops. They set the car up perfect. And, and I was just doing everything I could to hang on to it. And, and like I said, we were just we were good tonight. And, uh, of course, we wanted to win, but it was good. Congratulations. Don? Always fun to introduce some new players. Brian Campbell, son of Freddie. How was it your first night in a 3,400-pound stock car? Third tonight. Yeah, it was pretty fun. Uh, these cars are quite a bit different than what I'm used to. Once you get racing, it's just like a race car. You know, it's the same track. Just got to race it. That's Brian Campbell. Good job tonight. Well, it's been a great night of racing here at the Hands Group 200 here at Toledo Speedway. We told you this high-banked half mile would provide us with some great action, and it sure did. For Lindsey Zarniak and Don Radabaugh and Jim Trado, I'm Ralph Shaheen. Congratulations to Frank Kimmel, the winner of the Hands Group 200. So long, everybody.